In the previous video, we have discussed the pipeline of a Kalman filter. In this video, we will have some reflections about Kalman filter performance. About Kalman filter performance. The first point I wanted to talk about is the motion model. If we mismodeled the dynamics of state vector, we will not get good estimation. So basically, no good models mean no good estimation. The second point is what about the matrices Q and R? The covariance of the process noise and the covariance of the measurement noise. Basically, for matrix Q, there is no such a rule that following it, we can determine this matrix. It can be determined only from experiments, try and error. And there are some algorithms like expectation maximization or adaptive filtering that can help in determining the value of this Q matrix but it's quite advanced topics for this video. Matrix R basically can be obtained from the data sheet of the sensor use. So for example, if I use a leader or if I use a radar, I will find that uh, the accuracy of the sensor is somehow described in the data sheet and from this accuracy, I can determine matrix R. The third point I wanted to talk about is the initialization. I can initialize a state vector using the measurement. For example, if I wanna, if the state vector uh, of a moving car is its position and I measure it using GPS, so I can use the GPS location, the first measurement from GPS as initial condition for is a state vector and depending on the accuracy that GBS report I can form the initial covariance matrix. The fourth point is the covariance matrix itself. The covariance matrix is a square matrix with a dimension n by n where n is the number of the components in the state vector. Basically, it consists of two different types of elements. The diagonal elements and the off-diagonal elements. The diagonal elements uh, describes, the diagonal element describe the covariance of the estimated error. And the off-diagonal elements describe the correlation between these errors. So basically, if I consider that the components of the state vector are not correlated with each other, are not dependent on each other, so the off-diagonal elements will equal to zero. Usually, we start or we initialize the covariance matrix as a diagonal square matrix. So we put here, initialize, we initialize it with the covariance of the error, uh, of the estimated error uh, of the X components and zeros elsewhere. Also, for those people who are interested in linear algebra, P must be a positive semi-definite matrix. For other people, you can just search what does it mean positive semi-definite matrix, uh, and you will get it. The fifth point, convergence of Kama filter. A nice thing about Kama filter is that if we have good models, the filter must converge. So basically, its convergence can be described 
using this plot. So if I have here time steps and here is the value of the first element for example of the covariance matrix sigma square or even sigma let's like that I will find that it ha it will have this kind of curve over time. What does it mean? This value is the initial value of the covariance matrix that I used here. And after some time using this measurement, I will find that the covariance of the of the error of the first of the error uh, uh, of the first component will finally converge to some value and this value is called the steady state value of the covariance matrix okay if we estimate a constant this curve will convert to this curve so what does it mean It means that if I wanted to estimate a constant after some measurements I will estimate it very accurately without any kind of error. It's a very nice property of Kalman filter. This time from it's called the transition time and this is the time the filter takes to converge to a steady state value. These are five points about Kalman filter performance. And next, in next video we will discuss the EKF, extended Kalman filter, and how we will move from these nice linear models to nonlinear models. Okay, see you.